in this micro nugget, I'd like to walk you through how we can use dynamically assigned IP addresses on every single device and still create a hub and spoke environment using Flex VPN and Ike version 2. Let's begin. I had a question asked of me not too long ago regarding a topology of four routers. And what they wanted to do was they were all connected to the internet and they wanted to create a hub and spoke topology like this using IPsec to protect the traffic as it went back and forth between the hub and the various spokes. But then the twist came. The twist was, what if we're using dynamically assigned IP addresses on the spokes here, here, and here? Can we still set up a hub and spoke environment? And the answer is, again, absolutely yes. Dynamic multi-point VPNs, we've been doing that for, for close to a decade. Very easy to do. And then the question came, well, what if there's also a dynamically assigned IP address to the hubs interface that's connected to the internet? For example, the hub is assigned 15.0.0.1 not as a static address, but it's been dynamically assigned to that router. Now, is it possible to go ahead and create a hub and spoke topology secured by IPsec that can handle a dynamically assigned IP address on the hub? And the answer is, if we can get that IP address, whatever is assigned to R1 on its 00 interface, if we can get that into DNS so it's resolvable, the answer is, once again, yes, that can be done. And it can be done using Ike version 2 and something called Flex VPN. In a Flex VPN topology, we have a device, for example, R1, acting as a Flex VPN server. And it's going to have a dynamic virtual tunnel interface, which effectively means that whenever the spokes connect in, it's going to logically spawn off and create a virtual access interface for each of those connections from the spokes as they come in. The VPN server is also going to use something called an Ike version 2 authorization policy to allow the pushing of configuration and policy down to the spokes. Now the part that allows this to work with a dynamically assigned IP address on the hub is something called a VPN client configuration on the spokes. So in this client profile on the spokes, instead of pointing to the peer at 15001, which is no longer going to be good if that IP address ever changes, instead we can point to a fully qualified domain name and actually give the name and then R3 can go ahead and do a DNS resolution for the IP address and then go ahead and connect to that IP address. Because we're going to be using a DNS resolution, I want to make sure that DNS is working from the perspective of R4. So I've got an IP name server in my lab. It's at IP address 5555 and we'll specify that as the DNS server. Let's verify that we have reachability to that DNS server, at least with ICMP. We'll do a ping to 5555. That looks good. And I'm going to use hub1.cbtnuggets.com as the fully qualified domain name inside of the Flex VPN client. And I just want to verify that that's resolvable, which it is. To create the Ike version 2 client profile, the syntax is crypto, Ike v2, client, Flex VPN, and then we're going to name it. In this case, we'll call it our dash client. A question mark reveals our options that we can put inside the client configuration profile. We definitely want to specify a peer. So we're going to do a peer. There's also a sequence number. I'm going to say sequence number one, FQDN, and then the fully qualified domain name of the hub and the keyword dynamic. And this word dynamic simply says, please keep in the config hub1.cbtnuggets.com. Without the dynamic keyword, it would simply do the name resolution to 15001 and put the 15001 in the config, which is not what you want if that IP address behind that name may change in the future. And in the Flex VPN client, we can have multiple peers. We could have peer one and peer two and peer three. And that's a great way of having backups. If peer one isn't reachable, then it could go ahead and connect or try to connect to peer two if we had that configured. So for grins, let's add a backup Flex VPN server, peer number two at fully qualified domain name of hub2.cbtnuggets.com. I'm going to tell this client configuration that my loopback one interface is my inside interface for this VPN client. Also, just for a moment, let's do a show IP route for 10.0.0, just to see what routes we currently have in the routing table. And you'll notice we only have routes that we are directly connected to in the routing table. However, once we connect up to the Flex VPN server, it's going to push down some routes that are reachable over that tunnel. So watch for those here in just a moment. So the last piece in this puzzle is we need to tell the Flex VPN client which tunnel interface that's currently existing on this router it should use to go ahead and build that tunnel up to that Flex VPN server. And the syntax for that is client connect and then the name and number of that interface, which in this case is tunnel zero. Now in the background, we have a message indicating that our Flex VPN connection has been brought up. 
It's showing us our current public address, which is our address that we have on the internet. Here's the head end device that we're connecting to, 15001. So it did the DNS resolution for that. And we've been dynamically assigned a virtual address of 172.16.0.117 from the Flex VPN server. There are some show commands that are specific to the Flex VPN client. For example, show crypto Ike v2 client Flex VPN, not to be confused with the client Easy VPN, which was the previous version of this. And there's our client profile name, the current state is active. There's our virtual IP address we've been assigned. There's the tunnel zero interface that we told it to use. And our peer is hub1.cbtnuggets.com, which currently got resolved to 15001. If we wanted to look at the Ike V2 Security Association, we could do a show crypto Ike V2 SA, which indicates that we're using AES 256 for encryption of the Ike V2 tunnel, hashing is SHA 256, Diffie Hellman Group 14, and we're using RSA signatures for the authentication of the Ike V2 tunnel. Now, as cool as the Ike V2 tunnel is, that is not the tunnel that's used to actually send transit traffic back and forth. So the Ike V2 tunnel, once it's established, will spawn off some children. These children are going to be the IPsec security associations, one in each direction. For a bird's eye view of the tunnels, we can do a show crypto engine connections active, and we should have one Ike version 2 tunnel in place, the one that we just looked at, plus the IPsec security associations, one in each direction. Now, currently it says that there's no traffic being sent over that. So let's change that. Let's do a show IP route 10.0.0.0. I want to verify that we have at least one 10 network that's reachable over the tunnel. And this says, yeah, that 10 anything is reachable over tunnel zero. And if we look at the topology, R1 has a locally connected 10.1.1 subnet and R1 has a host address of .1 on that 10.1.1 subnet. So we should be able to ping 10.1.1.1. Let's go ahead and repeat that 100 times. And those look like they're going smashingly well. And let's use the up arrow key a few times and do that show crypto engine connections active. And sure enough, we've got 100 packets that were sent encrypted and we got 100 replies that were decrypted. I've had a great time. I'm glad you joined me for this video. I hope this has been informative for you. And I'd like to thank you for viewing.